The purpose of the next section is to teach you how to create a single read transaction. When finished, you should be able to take a usable protocol and create a read transaction, send the request, handle the response, and update the tag with the response. In particular, you will learn about the write character, transmit, read response, and update tag commands. The first step to implementing your protocol is creating a project in the top server. You will need to create a project with a channel and a device. To begin, click here to add a channel. In this example, the channel is named Yukon, and we will be selecting the user configurable for the device driver. We will use the COM parameters 9600 baud, 8 data bits, 1 stop bit, and no parity. The remaining channel settings can be left at default. Next, click here to add a device. The name of the example device is Scanner. We will use a numeric device ID and set the value to 1. The remaining device settings can be left at default. We are now ready to create the transaction. You can launch the transaction editor by going to the device properties, navigating to the transaction editor tab and choosing launch transaction editor. This is where you will configure your protocol. Click on the add tag button to add a new tag to the profile. The sample protocol will provide you with the data range, length, and type. Since this is a process mode parameter, we are naming it process mode. The data type will be word. Since this is a single ASCII byte, data format will be ASCII integer and the data length is one byte. The default access settings for the tag are read-write. You can leave them that way as you may want to add the write transactions for the tag later. Click OK when finished and save the tag. Expand the tag to see the read and write transactions for the tag and click on read. You will notice that there are no transaction steps in the right-hand pane of the editor called the transaction view. This is because we have not entered any steps yet. The get process mode command packet consists of the start transaction byte, two bytes for the device ID, the command code byte, and the end transaction byte. To start entering transaction steps, right-click in the transaction view area and select from the menu. We will start by writing the transaction start byte, which is a hex 2. Select the right character command and select hex 2 as the value. Click OK when finished. The following will appear in the transaction view area. Next, select Write Device ID. Since this is an ASCII protocol, the format will be ASCII integer. The length is 2 bytes. To set this, click the Format Properties button. The default is for fixed lengths to be checked with a string length of 1 and pad type of spaces. Change the string length to 2. And click OK to return to the Write Device ID dialog. Click OK when finished to add the transaction step. Now we will write the get process mode command code. Select the right character command and set the value to hex 21. Click OK when finished. Next, write the transaction end byte. Select the right character command and set the value to hex 3. Click OK when finished. Essentially, these commands are building a request string that will be sent to the device in the output or write buffer. Now select the transmit command. This will send the contents of the output buffer from the COM port to the device. Now that the request has been sent to the device, we need to handle the response coming back from the device. Select the read response command. We will wait for the transaction end byte in the response coming back from the device. Select the ASCII ETX character hex 3 as the stopped character. Click OK when finished. The last step is to update the tag from the response that has been received from the device and placed in the read buffer. We know from the protocol document that the data in the response starts at 5, so we will set the data start byte to 5. Click OK when finished. You should now have a basic idea of how to create a simple read request from a device. The flow diagram on the left illustrates the steps in our transaction view. The purpose of the next section is to teach you how to create a write transaction. When finished, you should be able to take a usable protocol and create a write transaction request, send the request, receive and handle the response, and lastly evaluate the response. In particular, you will learn about the write character, transmit, read response, test character, label, and log event commands. We are going to use our current profile to create a write request for the current scanner process mode parameter. In our examples, we will be adding each transaction step manually. You can copy transactions from one transaction to another or from one tag to another. Additionally, if you have 20 tags that have the same transaction steps with the exception of one byte, 
you can create one tag and then duplicate it, remembering to change the necessary byte or bytes in each one when you are finished. Begin by right-clicking in the Transaction View area and add a right character for the Start Transaction Bytes of the message. Next, add the Write Device ID command. Again, since this is an ASCII protocol, the format will be ASCII integer, and the length is 2 bytes. Now we will add the Step Process Mode command. From the protocol document, we see that the command code is hex 22. This is the double quote character. Since this is a write transaction, we need to write the data input by the operator to the write buffer. We do this with the write data command. There are two destinations, write buffer and scratch buffer. You can do one or the other or even both. You will notice that the write data command knows what format to use. This is because it knows the data format of the tag. Now write the transaction in byte. Select the write character command and set the value to hex 3. Next, we will transmit the contents of the write buffer that we have just configured. To do this, right-click and select Transmit. Now we need to handle the response for the device. For many protocols, transmitting the command and data is enough, so you will need to verify what happens when you do a write with your device's protocol manual. In our case, enter a read response command to the transaction and set the stop characters to hex 3. We know from our protocol documentation that the device will respond to this particular command with a positive acknowledge or a negative acknowledge. Once we read the response, we can choose to end the transaction by using the end command or entering no additional steps, or we can evaluate the response. It is good policy whenever a device gives you operational feedback, whether it is simple, acknowledges, or it is a checksum or error code to use it for validation of your data. We will test the response to see if the write completed or if it failed to be accomplished. In the test character command properties dialog, use the test value dropdown to specify the value you will be testing for. In our example, we will be testing to see if we got back the hex 6 ASCII acknowledgement character. Next, we select the data source that contains the data we are checking. In this case, it is the read buffer. Next, we will need to tell the command where in the buffer it will be checking for the correct character. We know from our protocol document that this is byte 5. Now that we have set what we are checking, we need to define what to do if the test is true or false. For the true action, we selected the go to action. This is similar to the go to command in programming. Next, we click on the action properties button to get the go to command properties dialog. Define the label that you would like the process to go to when it is true. Next, set the false action and select the action properties. Define the label for the failed action. When you are done, you will see the test transaction in the transaction sub view. Now we are going to add the label for the true result. The label name must match what you used in the go-to action of the test. You will also want to describe what this is for. The true action is quite simple. If we get an acknowledgement for the device, we will end the transactions. Add an end command to the transaction step. Next, add the label for the failed or false action. This would be when we received a negative acknowledgement on the right. Now we need to decide what to do. You could retry the write attempt or invalidate or deactivate the tag. We are going to post a message to the server's event log window. Select the log event command. Enter the message that you want posted in the event log and type the event that it will be. We chose error. The transaction will stop after this if you enter no more steps. We have chosen to add an end command so that we know exactly what happened. You should now have a basic idea of how to create a simple read request from a device. The full diagram on the left illustrates the steps in our transaction view. After you update and save your profile, you will be able to read and write to the device. Click on the Update Server icon in the Transaction Editor main menu. You will get a warning dialog asking if you are sure that you want to update the server. You will want to click the Yes button to save your changes and close the Transaction Editor. Clicking No in this dialog closes the editor without updating the server with your changes and you will be returned to the editor. If you choose exit from the menu and select to not update the server project, you will lose all of your changes and be returned to the server. Once the editor is closed, you should see the following information message appear in the server's event log. 